So Waldorf synths occupy this strange space. If you've ever really gotten into something, I'm gonna use for the sake of analogy, beer. You know, you start out, you're drinking Pilsners or drinking Stouts, maybe you get into IPAs, and you really, you know, you're looking at different types of beers you like, and then you know you're really into beer when suddenly you're exploring sour ales. Waldorf, to me, is the synth company that people go to after they've exhausted Core, Roland, Yamaha, Sequential, suddenly they're like, what else is there? And suddenly there's Waldorf. Today we're going to talk about their flagship, the Quantum, and why time might have already forgotten it. Hi, I'm Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, turn in your notifications. This is our Alamo Sound Lab channel where we talk about all things music tech related. And today we're talking about the Waldorf Quantum and why time might have already forgotten it. And it's really a sad thing. I always, the same thing with the Korg Prologue. We did a Since That Time Forgot video on the Prologue. Both of these are or are or were recently in production. And they just, for what they are, they don't get enough praise. They don't get enough attention. Um, you don't see people throwing these out as you should do this as your flagship synth or this is a really good all-arounder. And the question is why? And I think what I said at the beginning of the video is partially one of the reasons. Waldorf, for better or worse, is very niche and it has always been very niche it's explored kind of cutting edge technology and synthesis um, techniques and often they are things that you come to after you've gone through subtractive synthesis or fm synthesis and even just even romplers or whatever it's not something that a lot of people start out appreciating because it's just too it requires too much knowledge, kind of background knowledge. And so I think that might be part of the reason the quantum didn't have the impact that uh, that other flagship synths that have been released have kind of captured the collective imagination of um, synthesis enthusiasts all over the world. So I think that's part of the reason. I think also Waldorf is a smaller company. They're completely dedicated to making synths. A lot of these other companies have other things they make. They have a bigger marketing department. It's kind of strange in the U.S. Korg distributes Waldorf, which I think I would argue is a conflict of interest, but, you know, I who am I to tell them how to run their business? It's just odd. Um, and so I just, I think they don't have as much of a budget to market their products. And it's too bad because the Waldorf Quantum is really pretty amazing. And it is the second, it's the First flagship since they went bankrupt after releasing their last flagship, which was the Waldorf Q um, in the early, the late 90s, early 2000s, the Q, the Q Plus, that was their kind of last flagship. Waldorf has gone through different ownership, I think twice, um, kind of gone through bankruptcies and then reinventions. And they harken all the way back to the early 80s with PPG and early hybrid synthesis and wavetable synthesis. And the Waldorf definitely plays in, or the Quantum definitely is part of that lineage. Um, I think another issue with this synth, um, and that another reason why it's kind of being looked over in the modern marketplace, is that they've released the very cool Iridium, um, and the Iridium this year released it with um, an aftertouch keyboard, so a keyboard version. And the technology inside the Iridium is this: the engine is the same as the Quantum. There's not as far as I can tell, much difference, if any difference. In fact, you get 16 voices with the Iridium versus eight voices with the Quantum. And the only, the really most notable difference is the fact that the Quantum is a hybrid synthesizer. It has two analog filters in it, and so it's a whole different palette of sounds. It also has digital filters and digital filter technology in it, but the real difference between the Quantum and the Iridium is in the filter technology. And so the question really boils down to is, well, and also there's some other things it doesn't have. It doesn't have as much connectivity in the back. The quantum doesn't. So this makes it part of the reason why it's struggling. It doesn't have as much connectivity in the back. 
doesn't have polyphonic aftertouch, has less voices than the Iridium, which costs a lot less. And so it's just a weird thing. And so the question ultimately boils down to, do the analog filters and the hybrid, the ability to paint with a hybrid sound make justify the price difference between the Iridium and the Quantum? I think there's other little differences. I think the, the interface is different. The, the way the buttons are laid out, they're both nice. I actually prefer the Quantum's layout. And there's some finish touches that the Quantum has that the Iridium does not. So it feels and looks more like a $5,000 synth than the Iridium, which is also expensive, but not as expensive as the Quantum. So you get some finish touches. And, I, and people want to downplay that, but I actually think it's funny. We're so hard on synthesizer manufacturers. It's like, what is the value, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at like the purse industry or like the clothing industry and the differential people, people will pay $500 for a shoe designed by so-and-so versus a shoe, the $50 shoe you can get at Target. And there's something to be said for paying for aesthetics and the, the view, the, the way it feels and the touch. Um, I think that sometimes we, because I think the synthesizer community is so analytical, they're like, what is the value of that? It's arbitrary, but it is worth what it's, what someone's willing to pay. Um, and yeah, so that's really the differences between the Iridium and the Quantum. And I wanted to play it. I wanted to get a feel for it, um, and use my own ears to listen and, and really get a sense of whether or not it makes a difference. Is it, is it justify the price difference? Just having analog filters on their flagship engine. I'm a big fan of the Iridium engine and the Quantum engine. We've made a couple videos. Chris Klein has done some more in-depth videos going into the synth engines and the technology inside this instrument. So if you wanna get deeper into that, we've made a couple other videos. But really this video is about the Quantum. It should it have been forgotten. I'm gonna play it now and then we're gonna conclude with the final thoughts on does it, does it, is it worth it? Should it have been forgotten? You have my thoughts on why I think it is in the process of being forgotten, but does it deserve more attention? We'll answer that at the end. Take a listen.
So there you have it, the Waldorf Quantum. And here are my thoughts. I do think the analog filters, the dual analog filters, the routing options that you can do with the filters and the digital filter do make it a good value proposition. I do think it's unique. I think this is going to be viewed as one of those synths that didn't get it. I mean, I think it's, I think it's worthy of its price point. I do think it's... Um, interesting i think it's unique in the available flagship synthesizers out there you know the obx8 just was released i think this is a good i mean the the synth engine here is way more complex than the one in the obx8 and people are shelling out the about the same amount and you are getting analog the analog kind of flavor the warmness um, i think there's a compressor right next to the volume control which is a really nice little feature that you can really color the sound as well and get it warmer, beefier. Um, and so it's a very broad palette of sounds with the engine and the kind of coloring you can do with the analog filters. Um, so I think it's, it is kind of overlooked unfairly. And I wonder what will happen long term. There's, if you read online, there's a lot of people that talk about quantum versus iridium. And there's a fair amount of people that have chosen the quantum over the iridium because of the different kind of palette of sounds and the more, uh, the richer uh, sound design that you, and the, the richer expression that you can get um, from this instrument versus the Iridium. So I would, I think I agree with that. Um, you know, if money is never an issue, uh, yeah, I would choose the, the Quantum over the Iridium. I wish it had polyphonic aftertouch. I wish it had 16 voices. There's been discussion about a third firmware update that could change some of these things. Um, it's interesting also, another reason I think it was forgotten was it didn't have the kernel engine when this was released. It came out with version two. Um, and I have to also say the amount of patches in here are insane. They're really well designed. They're from uh, some of the best patch designers kind of in synth history. Don Solaris has got a whole section. Richard Devine has a section. And I appreciate that Waldorf actually labels who designed the patch. It's really kind of a testament to them giving tribute to those people that really know how to bring the life out of these technologies. So I think this is really a love letter to synth, to synthesizers and synth history. The engine in here is really cutting edge and I think the ability to warm it up with analog filters makes it super unique and will keep give it a place in history that people will be talking about how they wish they would have bought it and how it's a collector's item. That's just my take. I do think it'll probably still be forgotten and not continue to sell particularly well, but that's my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Do you have any comments below? Please leave them. would love to continue the dialogue. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications, and I hope you make some music today and enrich your life. So until next time, we'll, we'll talk.